Joining me now for right versus left is the ever lovely, the beautiful Andy McDonald and Emma Weber. Caught you out with that one again. Okay. 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 <laughs> Emma, let's, uh, <laughs> let's talk about the NHS. I know you're quite passionate on this subject. We see record amounts of investment money going into the NHS. I know the left will bang on about the £350 million a week on the bus, on the Brexit bus. Mm -hmm. It's actually more than that that we, we extra we're pumping into that. Is it a failing model? Of course it is. I mean, anybody who's had any experience of it knows that it is. That's not something that is in dispute. I mean, people might disagree about the way to solve the problem, but we know that, I mean, there are places across the country and it's a complete postcode lottery where you can't get to see a dentist at all. Um, in some places you have to wait, never mind months, years to get, you know, on the waiting list for certain issues. It varies wildly according to where you are in the country. The reality is that people's experience of the NHS is that it is completely failing, that we have a, a, a universal lack of health care. Well, let's just introduce that nasty word into the conversation, privatisation. Would you do that? Um, yes, if, I, I mean... When you say privatisation is the same as nationalisation, you need to specify exactly what you mean. But the reality is that there, it isn't just a, a decision between the model that we have now, which is completely failing and is a big black hole for taxpayers' money, and also we're paying into it and getting very little in return um, with the sort of bloated bureaucracy that is just yeah. sucking all of that money in. And then on the other hand, the American model. So I think, you know, and actually, I hate to say it, but Wes Streeting was right in traveling around to look at different models and saying that the NHS should be a service, not a shrine, because we do need to look at the way other models work. There are private models that could work, and we need to be less arrogant in saying, oh, this, our NHS is the envy of the world. It's not. It needs to change, and it needs to change radically now mm. um, before more people suffer and die as a result of its failings. Um, so, yes, I'm sure that there is a private, a, a, a privatised model or an increasingly privatised reform that could fix the problem because the current situation as, it's, as it currently stands is not sustainable Andy, at all. Andy, is Emma right? I think, yeah, I, I, I agree. I, I don't agree with the privatisation of it, uh, but I do think that it, it, it's, it's an objective. It's, it is failed. It's a, a failure of a system. You know, the waiting lists are, you know, uh, I think almost two years long for, for some people. It's ridiculous. Uh, you know, nurses have taken strike action for the first time in history. Yeah. You know, when you've got these kind of historical milestones happening, you know something's going wrong. Yeah. I think we need to get the university trusts that have been running awry with our National Health Service in line. We need to centralise it yeah. and we need to keep them to a to so let's high talk, standard. Andy, let's talk, Andy, about the, the abuse of the NHS. It's almost become a international health service. We know people that's coming from different countries with various illnesses, some serious illnesses, just to take advantage well, we, I think we call them um, health health tourists. Is it time we clamp down on that? Yeah, I think so. And I think that's the the go if if only we had a member of the governing party yeah. sat with us at this table and they could do something about it. Like, please, uh, you know, I'm sure that uh, when if the Labour Party win the election uh, either in May or November, they'll cut migration. They'll sort out illegal uh, migration. I think they will. They'll, 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 they'll stop health tourism. Very well, you know, uh, you know, after 14 years, the tourists seem to have a deficit. You know, there's not much on the legislative agenda in the Commons, and they're not really doing much else. So clearly, they, they've got a deficit of ideas. So I'm glad that one party has some ideas about something. Well, no, it's, uh, it's easy to have ideas. It's very difficult to actually do something about it. And I think that the only, Labour Party, had 14 years to do something, the Labour about Party it, would face the same practical challenges that the Conservative Party have had. Although I do think actually that a Labour government would probably have more success in privatising the NHS because they wouldn't face the political. Yeah. Um, difficulties that a Conservative Party would face. Would they go for it, Andy, privatising the NHS? I mean, West Streeting seems to be saying the, the same sort of things that many of my colleagues are saying. I think West Streeting is uh, right on some things about the NHS. I think he, he's looking at a, a somewhat cooperative model yeah. uh, between the private and public sectors, which is... But we have that already, don't we? Uh, yeah, well, I think an actual... Uh, you know, we've got one just in name only at the moment. Yeah. You know, these university trusts are kind of like mm, a bit, yeah. bit bizarre in their constitution. Uh, but I think West Streeting is looking at a cooperative model, so not yeah. full privatisation, but just a sprinkle of the private sector. And it gets my go, Emma, when I see people on the left banging on about we need more money for the NHS, and then I see some of the vacancies they've got advertised for the, all these diversity roles. I see them, you know, buying all these different flags and and all these in, in, you know, the diversity courses 
an inclusivity course that they're running, surely if they were struggling for money, they wouldn't be doing this. And on unbelievable salaries, yeah. some of those diversity um, roles that are in management, part of the sort of bloated yeah. bureaucracy. Yeah. And while you have frontline staff like doctors and nurses striking and putting patients' lives at risk. Mm. So it's not about how much money the NHS receives, it's about how efficiently it uses yeah. that money. Yeah. And it's be it's become almost like a kind of um, unreformable Soviet yeah. bureaucracy. And it so is. I think you really need to have a sort of like military approach okay. um, to, to and, I, and, and like I said before, you can't talk about this in the abstract. We can't talk about privatization or nationalization. We need specifics. We yeah. need to figure out where the inefficiencies are mm. and then we need to tear them out and, and, and reform the system. So you made a point about the, uh, about the unions holding the health service to ransom and you know, ultimately costing lives, which I, th I think the strikes have cost lives, and the euro a trade unionist. How do you square that one with some of your colleagues in the trade union movement going on strike and putting patients' lives at risk? Obviously, when it's an essential service like the NHS and healthcare, there are many minimum service levels. Do you agree with that? that? Uh, I think in the NHS, yeah, I think there, there have been minimum service levels for a long time yeah. and they will continue to be. And, you know, the RCN, the BMA, Unison, whomever it may be, whether it's paramedics, nurses, doctors that are striking, they yeah. do match those minimum service levels. Yeah. So I think there are the precautions taken. But uh, the fact that we had, uh, what was it, Steve Barkley, who was health secretary for the last few years, now Victoria Atkins, they've just failed to yeah. come to the table. It's the last, you know, you, you, yeah, were, striking, when, when, you were a striking miner. When, you know I, this. I wasn't a so. striking miner. You, uh, you went on strike when you were a miner. I wasn't. Yeah, you did. Now I started the, the pits. Fact check, fact check. Fact I started check. the gold mine uh, a year after. You still strike. took day strikes, no? Yeah, took day strikes. Yes, yeah. that's what a striking okay. miner means. Yeah, like, yeah. You were, so, so fact check. He banged up. He was a striking miner. <laughs> We like, when we was legislating for these minimum, minimum service um, agreements, the Labour Party was up in arms saying you, you're taking away the right to, for, um, for doctors and nurses to strike and get better pay and better conditions. It wasn't about the NHS, it was about the, the railway primarily, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, well... Um, the, the minimum service levels. I mean, it's not possible for doctors and nurses to strike without endangering patients. I just don't, I don't believe that there's a way for them to safely do that. Yeah. Um, and you're right about you say, you know, 14 years of of Tory rule. I don't disagree with you because I I think that and as, as someone who voted for the Conservatives in 2019, I feel enormously disappointed, and you know that I do, Lee, and it's not you, it's the leadership of the rest of the leadership of the party. Um, I, I, I feel enormously disappointed, but I don't believe for a second that the Labour Party would be more responsible and would do a, a better job with complicated things like reforming the NHS. I think that the situation would only get worse. And one of the things that puts massive pressure on the NHS is immigration. Exactly. And I think that that would be far, far worse under the Labour Party too. Yeah, I, I tend to agree. Look, guys, that's been a great debate. And it's always a pleasure to have you on the show, even though we disagree. No, we don't actually disagree on most things. I think I need to check your Labour membership card. I think you've probably got a blue card in, in your, your pocket somewhere. <laughs> crypto Tory. He is, isn't he? He's a, he's a secret Tory.